So you guys are the only ones brave enough not to go to the other all-star panels? The hardcore presentations? Yeah. Cool. Um, he's Sam. All right, I'm Sam. You might know me from Exploding Dog. And this is basically it, and I've been doing it since late 1999. But uh, sorry. the uh, process is that I titles are submitted to me, and I draw a response to that title. So I think it's too big for this. <laughs> do this. Will this work? Let's find out. There we go. Hey. So, for example, someone would say, if only this made sense. Am I doing this wrong? Did you just, yeah, you actually put it on the power button. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's a plug coming out. Plug out. No, you just had it on the thing. Okay. So. What are we doing? Want oh. to do that part? So, if only this made sense, and then I do a drawing based on the title, if only this made sense. And that's basically it, and there's thousands of drawings and been doing that and other things over the last 10 years or so, 12 years? 13, because I've been doing 12. Okay. And you were ahead of me. So, so. Uh, I'm Rich and I draw diesel sweeties. I basically just draw pixel robots having sex with girls. Uh, let's see if I can pick one where people were doing it by memory. Um, whoops. We're very new at computers. <laughs> Alright, this one should be really, really dirty. No, sorry. <laughs> and that's a red robot whom um, actually I, I borrowed from Sam because back when he got started, we were both neighbors and we lived across the street from each other. <laughs> we went to college together for about three years and I didn't know you until we were done, I think. And I mean, I've been just drawing a daily comic strip for about 12 years, and I was briefly in the newspapers, which was terrible. And then luckily the internet was still there. So thank God for the internet. Don't ever go to old media if you can be on the internet. So we're doing a casual question and answer. Yeah, we're really here to ask. That's what we're doing. So we're here to ask we have questions. casual questions. And, uh, and you're going to be first, but I just, is that, a, is that one of those kid PC? I've never seen one of those. That's awesome. I, that's cool. Okay, now that I'm done bothering you. What specifically was terrible about being a newspaper? Um, have you ever gotten an email where somebody said, what is this shit and why is it replacing Kathy? <laughs> It, it's just, it's, it's, just a, it's kind of one of those industries which is really locked in and it's, it's, it's running on inertia and it's running on people who don't want it to change. And the comics page is one of those things where if you experiment with it or do something different with it, really all you get are complaints so they don't do anything different with it. So that's, that's the problem <laughs> with newspapers. But it was fun. It was like going to grad school. It put me into debt, and I worked seven days a week, like 15 hours a day. So. <laughs> they didn't like try to force you to make a Christmas special or something, right? Uh, actually, I volunteered to try to do a Christmas special because that's the only promotion they offer you. The syndicate does like a, you get to draw six extra weeks of comics for free, and then we'll offer them for free to all the papers who will take a Christmas strip. And then um, everybody hated me too much. So... <laughs> When did you last have a job? I had a real job in 2001, and that 2000, was the last time. 2002 for me. I've been doing this, making money in various ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we telling them about the massage stuff? <laughs> you should see his hands. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, um, we mostly live on merchandise. I mean, I fold and mail t-shirts every day. Like, I, my work day starts in the morning when in the t-shirt in the office, and then I turn around to the drawing office. And I'm kind of lucky, lucky enough to live in a place with good mail service. And you are what, more prints? I do artwork. And He's the artist, and I'm just the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this business, the, the webcomic business, isn't really that old, right? It's like max 20 years. I remember, like, kind of... 20? Max. 
I yeah. feel like Andy I would say I would say fourteen to fifteen at most yeah. because people thought we were freaks when we got started. Yeah, you guys were definitely very, very different like you should have But um yeah. you know, and there's definitely been some very popular comics in this time and some some rise, you know, there's Penny Arcade who gets their own expo now and, and some fall like like Mega Tokyo where you kinda wonder where those guys went. I think um, yeah. I mean they're still doing okay, but they're way less popular. I remember God, two thousand and four when they were like Um, well, you know why, right? I didn't pay any attention. Well, it's not, no drama. It's like the main characters looked like Marie from the Martian Success from Tedesco, which was, it just came out in 2001 and picked up in 2003. The whole lead to the question is, do you think there's anything that predicts the rise or fall of a webcomic? Ooh, I don't think there's so much of a rise and fall. Like, there's some very, successful comics that are supporting themselves that like we have no idea about like there's like the, like we wake up and we find out that there's another universe of somebody making millions of dollars we've never heard of yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's and so even if you haven't necessarily heard it or it was big see it seemed big to you once and now it doesn't seem big at all it's that person could still be doing very well within his own group so. yeah what's really weird though is i don't know if you guys saw the keynote but the way he was describing when people try to force a meme for com commercial purposes, it seems to fail. And then the biggest stuff seems to come out of nowhere, completely unplanned. You know, like, like questionable content, like just started on my message board. It was just like, and now it's 50 times bigger than any of us. And he didn't plan to make a business. He just, he did something at the right time that people really liked and he stayed at it. And yeah, I don't know. but. There's a lot of people who will screw themselves, you know, like who just stop doing their job. And then like, there's no amount of popularity that will save you if you vanish for a year. So don't vanish for a year. You too. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of you like produce it? Oh, I'm sorry, you have a real question. I was just gonna fill up space until somebody thought of something. <laughs> we, yeah, we both went to art school. Did I? Well, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were both in our. I mean, I went into the design department, and you were what, experimental in video. Yeah. And I'm, I remember seeing his posters around the school for like the video nights they would do the ex exhibitions, and I was stealing them because I was a fan while they were. Back when you were a child. Yes. I still have them in a box, so when you die, I'm gonna sell them. <laughs> Six years from now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I was wearing it. To, I, I wore it because I was thinking about. Um, I, anybody use the Mac like to transmit Panic software? They sell these, and I was just they they made these, and I was thinking about Portland, so I packed it. So. I sold I've sold books for quite a while. And You're very good at I still books. yeah, and I have more books coming out next summer, so I just but it, there's I mean if you can sell them, there's no reason not to do them. I and mean, if you have a good reason to do them, but it is an investment, and you have to if you're self-publishing, it's an investment, and you have to sort of consider that if you want to have a warehouse full of books, you can't sell if it doesn't work out. But but people really I mean no matter how much you do on the internet, people love getting a book. You know, like even even if the book becomes a premium item that isn't sold constantly or cheaply, people want to get something when they meet you, or they want to get something that won't be in a format that will be discontinued in five years. So I guess kind of corollary is like, merch like the best way to monetize? Uh, Are we going to use the rule where you can't use monetize? Um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I, when we first started, and there was I think. We both started right after like the ad market had sort of crashed, oh, and yeah. we knew people that had started a year before us and that were making like millions of dollars a month for doing nothing, and then and suddenly they, they, and then suddenly they were making sixteen dollars a month, and they're wondering what to do, and so that sort of that's why I always stay away from ads. It just sort of didn't seem didn't seem right. It would be great to to just get paid to, to exist, but 
I mean, I've always just been a sucker for t-shirts. I love t-shirts, and I knew I knew a guy who printed t-shirts, and now he prints for everybody, and it's just it's been great. And just it just was like kind of a stumbling into selling the thing you like, which I think works. You know, like. You actually hang up art. Yes. You know, you can sell prints. I mean, I change the desktop on my computer. I'm not going to be good at selling prints. <laughs> but I wear t-shirts constantly, so it's easy to kind of get in the head of yourself. Wow, that was really obvious. <laughs> but. Have you guys all had distinctive styles in you experiment beforehand or landing on these styles, or has it always kind of been the same thing? I started drawing this way. Um, well, I went to when I was in art school. And I wanted to be more of a serious artist. You are, and well, I. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I sort of just been doing this along the side, just as for fun since I don't know since probably the early '90s, and it just sort of kept going and going and going. And the first ones I did on the uh, put on the exploding dog site are actually awful, but I was like drawing them with the mouse and had no idea what I was doing. But it was more of a spontaneous thing. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I, I went to school for design, so I just wanted to make a comic strip, and my concept was going to be girls dating robots, and I just went through things until I found something that clicked for me. Like the, and I just felt that the, the pixel art was abstract enough that it was warm, and it was, you know, it was a fuzzy thing, but at the same time it talked about the robots, so it was a little more like, it was a little more just testing until it felt right, and then kind of, that became the only thing I can draw for 20 years. So. Oh, is, it, is that doing Pac-Man logic? I don't know. Where it goes off one end and comes back the other? No. Okay. Are they multiple dragons? Yes, okay. different colors. I just assume everything is Pac-Man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, how do you keep like, your momentum going in terms of like, creativity? Like, how, how do you like, keep you know, the ideas? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done this. I, so, well, I sort of had Every year I try to have a new concept that I'm working on, and it's not necessarily something that everyone, I don't announce it and I don't say what it is, and sometimes I do a separate site that I do for just for a year. Just, sorry. <laughs> but I always try to, I don't know, I always, for every year I sort of have a different thing that I'm working on, and that sort of keeps me interested, and plus I also, I don't update regularly, which, Everyone tells you you need to, but I, I never have, and I'll take months off and work on different projects, or something comes up and I'm working on that for a few months, I'll do that and just ignore the site. But I always like coming back to it because it always gives me new ideas. Yeah, I'm kind of the opposite. I, I think it was a Raymond Chandler book I was reading in college. It was about sitting down for an hour every day in the same location, no matter what, and you're not allowed to do anything except write. You can either write or you can sit on your ass, and you're not allowed to do anything else. And I just got into a rhythm of, of updating at midnight, and I can't not do it. Like, like if, I don't, if I don't put something up, I don't sleep, and I just get sick. So that's how you do it. <laughs> Basically, train yourself to become ill. <laughs> so. But I mean, at the same time, though, it, I mean, are you building something? Are you writing something, or do you? Well, I, so I do comics for How many people here do comics? I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, I've always felt that if you if you just keep doing them, even if you do a thousand of them and only a hundred are good, if you're a procrastinator like me, that's a lot more good pages than you would have gotten if you waited to do the perfect one every time, and you can always throw them away. You know? so. so I guess that means that you don't maintain a book. I try to, but I never do. I'll do it if I'm traveling, but I, I generally work at night. I just I'll come up with something. I'm, I mean, it can come. I, I, I've done the thing where I've had a buffer and then still like at ten of midnight be like, you know what? I like this idea better, and then go to bed at two. It's just I mean, it's almost like street busking as opposed to really prepping. And maybe that's why I didn't fit into the newspaper because they need like six week buffers. And well, I like it just be instantaneous and sort of immediate, sort of like immediate and like participate what's going with what's going on and what's happening, so. And it be, but it becomes kind of a journal in a way too, once you, if you're doing it every day and you can see patterns in your own life and 
you know, I mean, you probably, you come away with it. You, you go away from it and come back almost like gallery installations in a way, like where you do it like almost a collection. Yes. You know, like if you step away for a month, you come back with a new theme. That sounds like GSM noise. One of us, one of our phones just pinged the network. Somebody's on to us. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. <laughs> but it's like, you know what I mean? Like you come and go with larger motions and almost like symphonically and I'm more of a like dude keeping entire ears poops, you know? It's, yeah. yeah. Well, I also have a Tumblr that I update almost, well, a few times a week, but I have notebooks full of stuff that is ready to be just sort of finished up and then go on it. It's all set to go. And it's but you, you produce more in the way of like real books or yeah. art pieces and stuff too. You know, it's not all on the web. Yes. Basically, it's just going to be a whole hour of me telling him how he's a better artist. <laughs> and that's fine.